Hello everyone, my name is Dr Matt Williams, I'm a tutor in politics and one is known as the Access Fellow here at Jesus College and I'm delighted to be here with... Hi, my name is Yusuf, I'm a fifth year medical student. And Hi, my name is Leo, I'm a first year medical student at Cuba College. So in today's video we're going to be talking about supercurricular and extracurricular activities that can be helpful if you're making an application to Oxbridge, Oxford or Cambridge for medicine. So first of all, what do those terms even mean? Uh, supercurricular, you say? Yep, so supercurricular is really anything that either broaden or deepen your understanding of the core syllabus and it allows you to explore something that you might have covered in A-level biology or chemistry, but to the greater detail. So it's not actually on the syllabus, but you're covering it to further detail. Great, and extracurricular? Yeah, so extracurricular activities are those non-academic uh, activities that you do outside in your life, uh, but they which helps you to develop your compassion uh, and other core, and just core values, uh, which are also helpful in medical school application. Fantastic. So let's start personal, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do yeah. in order to put some stuff in your personal statement? Sure, so I'll answer that. I think the first thing I'd say is like a public service announcement is that these are only examples that we've done and that they don't mean that you have to do them as well. So from our personal experiences, I did do an EPQ that my school offers. What I do want to say with that is if your school doesn't offer an EPQ, that's absolutely fine because you could always do a science club, for example. I was just part of a science club. Or if you don't have a medic club, you can also just found a medic society in itself and that can be really quite useful where you can explore either medical articles that come up. There's loads of stuff happening on BBC News, The Guardian. So be to check them out and develop that habit on a regular basis. Yeah, so as Yusuf said, none of those uh, personal stories are any sort of uh, disciplines that you have to follow, they're just suggestions. Uh, personally, I uh, so for super uh, curricular activities, uh, I involved myself in several uh, scientific competitions like a uh, 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 math challenge, uh, purely because I'm interested in that and I want to develop more knowledge in terms of of mathematics and also just uh, I want to work with the team uh, to get a high score in the competition. Um, but that's nothing essential that you have to do. Uh, in terms of extracurricular, uh, I'm quite the uh, opposite of what's a quintessential um, uh, medical applicant because I didn't have any unfilled uh, work experience and that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's not a, an essential demand for Oxbridge uh, medical application uh, to have work experience. It's really to develop your own compassion and empathy. Uh, so what I did was I, uh, I looked at a lot of online work experience, like that one from uh, Brighton and Sussex, and it really helped me uh, gain a better insight into what medicine is uh, and how, to, how we should treat people as doctors. And that's what's important. Great. So I think it's fair to say, but correct me if I'm wrong on this, that supercurriculars are particularly important for a medical application to Oxford or Cambridge. Why? Yeah, so um, I think at the end of the day, it's always worth thinking about the selection criteria that both Oxford and Cambridge have. If you haven't already, please be sure to Google Oxford Medicine Selection Criteria. They're very clear on the website what they're looking for. It's effectively a mark scheme, right, for the personal statement and for interviews. And one of the key things that they're looking for is actually your critical thinking and your intellectual curiosity. With both of these, it's not about being a human encyclopedia and they're testing how much knowledge you know across you know, a variety of different things. That's what A-levels are really for. What they're testing here is about how well you're able to apply new knowledge that you have, and how well you're able to understand it and understand how you know, innovation happens um, in medical research, for example. And the more that you can focus on that, the better you'll be in your application. Now, here's a really tricky question. How do you know when you've done enough supercurriculars? Yeah, it's really hard to say, isn't it? Because uh, it's really personal and there's no definitive answer to say you have to do, do a 30 hour package of volunteering and then another 20 hours of competition. Uh, there's not a fine line like that. It really depends on what kind of skill you need to develop. Um, but in terms of consistency, uh, I think it's still valuable to do some sort of, uh, uh, so, some sort of activity uh, on a weekly basis for extended period, like say six months of volunteering uh, uh, every week for two hours on a weekend. Uh, uh, in the hospital, in a charity, whatever it is for you, uh, consistency will help you develop your skills a lot. Uh, so I, I feel like that's what's important in terms of knowing how much uh, you want to do, how much you need to do in terms of extracurricular activity is consistency uh, helps you develop the skills and uh, those skills are what you needed. 
Right, and in particular, sort of self-reflection, right? Yeah. So once you've done an activity, you think about it, right? Yeah. And there's different reflection techniques that you can use. A very common one that's used in the medicine application process is the STAR technique. So S-T-A-R-R. So S for situation, T for task, A for action, R for result, and R for reflection as well. This is particularly useful when it comes down to the personal statement. And what I always recommend is thinking about a particular disease that you might have saw, for example, during a care home, where you might have seen something about Alzheimer's, for example. But then use it as a leapfrog opportunity, as a way that you can then say, actually, you know what, I was then able to do further reading at home where I was able to understand more about how the disease works and how the disease was caused in the first place. And then from that you can say, oh actually I read a science article about how you can treat Alzheimer's or dementia for example. And that way you're not only just mentioning different things as dots but you're starting to connect those dots together and you're able to draw a picture and reflect upon something. And that can be a really good way to show an insight whether it be from bench to bedside, how a novel technique in research can then actually be applied to patients. So that shows a real mature understanding of medicine from research to clinic. What about extracurricular activities? How important are those? Yeah, so um, as mentioned earlier, it is not uh, an essential requirement that you need to apply to Oxford as a potential medical student, but they are very helpful in terms of uh, getting insight into medicine and also uh, develop your uh, uh, co uh, develop your personality and values to line up with the NHS core value. So uh, I think what's important to take away from them is as you have mentioned, reflection, reflection, and how you can extract the things that you've seen and observed to your own material understanding and potentially interest into uh, say uh, from what you say, see in your volunteering opportunities to uh, a more scientific aspect and uh, that is what uh, that's a core skill that Oxbridge values a lot in terms of reflecting from what you see transfer it to uh, problem solving skills. Right so we're almost making extracurriculars into supercurriculars by finding that academic relevance right in whatever we do so what, what sort of stuff could viewers do do you think is it it can really be anything it can be Duke of Edinburgh that can be one way but it's not the only way if your school doesn't offer it that's absolutely fine you could always do any sort of music sports or drama and that's another way in which you can show your commitment to a particular um, aspect or hobby that you enjoy well not only can it show commitment in whatever you enjoy but secondly it shows that actually um, you have an opportunity to de-stress and medicine is or can be at times very stressful and so it's really important that you just want to see that you're actually able to have those coping mechanisms and that you're able to have that resilience in that so in itself can be quite useful anything that can show teamwork or leadership skills is really really great and as I said that can be from music sports drama it could be from leading society it could be from founding your school's medic society if it doesn't already exist so any of these ways can it's really up to you you know Doctors themselves have loads of different personalities and skills, and admissions users know that. And so it completely depends on whatever extracurriculars that you enjoy, and really it's whatever you enjoy, really. Okay, so I think a take-home message for me is to develop those habits and make that as ingrained into your routine as possible. And it doesn't matter what sort of media it is. So if you don't like reading, that's absolutely fine. You've got YouTube videos that you can watch. And actually, I'd highly recommend subscribing to different YouTube channels and science channels. Curses Ants, in a nutshell, is a great one. They've got really good explainer videos on different diseases. And that can be a really good way to foster your intellectual curiosity of medical science. If you don't like watching videos or reading, you can also check out podcasts and subscribers to them. So my top tip is to develop that habit and really feed that intellectual curiosity of yours. Absolutely and I would love to thank uh, Yusuf and Leo for their time today and speaking of YouTube channels you should subscribe to, one of them has to include the Aspiring Medics which is a fantastic channel, we'll provide all the details in the description. Go and check it out, it will be incredibly helpful to you on your journey to medical school. Thank you for watching, see you next time. See you in the next one, bye.